What is Broken Arrow? The American military commonly uses acronyms, abbreviations, code words and phrases in order to convey concepts and ideas in a more efficient way. One of these codes is Broken Arrow. Over the years, it has had several different meanings, all of which generally mean that someone is having a very bad day. Perhaps the most famous use of the code phrase Broken Arrow occurred in 1965. In November of that year, the 1st Battalion of the 7th Cavalry Regiment, 1st Air Cavalry Division, began a major offensive against NVA forces in the Yadrang Valley in central Vietnam. Waiting for them were well-dug-in and prepared NVA regulars. For one of the first times in the conflict, the two forces would face each other in a major engagement. Landing at a location designated LZ X-Ray, the 450 men of the 1st Battalion engaged the NVA on November 14. That day saw fierce fighting as the troopers fought desperately against elements of the 66th and 33rd NVA regiments, who were determined to overrun the invaders. At one point, a 29-man platoon was surrounded by over 200 NVA regulars, but managed to hold their ground, utilizing concentrated airstrikes and artillery barrages. All the while, Huey pilots risked the intense fire to deliver supplies and evacuate the wounded. The next day, the fighting renewed with an even greater ferocity. Pressing the attack, the NVA attempted to overrun a portion of the line held by C Company, while at the same time nearby D Company was also heavily engaged. Fighting devolved into hand-to-hand -hand combat as both sides refused to give in. With the situation rapidly deteriorating, the code Broken Arrow was sent by Forward Observer Lieutenant Charlie Hastings who was either ordered to do so by Battalion Commander Lieutenant Colonel Hal Moore or acted on his own initiative. Used in this context, Broken Arrow was a prearranged signal that an American unit was in imminent danger of being overrun and that all available air power was to divert to that location for close air support. When the message was relayed, aircraft around Vietnam immediately headed to the Yadrang Valley to support the beleaguered troopers. Planes waited on station for their turn to drop their deadly payloads of high explosives and napalm on the advancing NVA forces, expending their ordnance dangerously close to American positions. For the next three hours, flights of ground attack aircraft, as well as a near-continuous barrage of 105mm howitzers from nearby Firebase Falcon, managed to stem the tide to the NVA assault. C Company held their position, but at a terrible cost. Over half of the men were either killed or wounded, and every officer in the company was a casualty. The next day, the 1st Battalion managed to extract from LZ X-Ray, suffering heavy casualties. The day after that, 2nd Battalion was attacked at nearby LZ Albany, suffering the heaviest number of casualties in a single day by U.S. forces in Vietnam, though the code was not called during this engagement in spite of the ferocious fighting that occurred there. There were some reports that Broken Arrow was used once more, this time in Afghanistan. In October 2009, the men of Bravo Troop 3rd Squadron 61st Cavalry Regiment 4th Infantry Division were stationed at Combat Outpost Keating near the Pakistani border. At 6 a.m., the outpost came under attack by concentrated Taliban forces. After a short time, it became obvious that this was not a simple raid or hit-and-run attack, but a sustained full-on effort. An estimated 3 to 400 Taliban fighters descended on the 53 Americans. At several points during the 13-hour firefight, the Taliban breached the perimeter and threatened to overrun the outpost. In desperation, the beleaguered troopers called in close air support. According to some reports of the battle, the code Broken Arrow was sent out, the first and only time since 1965 that this was used, though this is difficult to confirm. In any event, as was the case in Vietnam, the call meant that an American unit was being overrun and in imminent danger of destruction, and all available air power was to divert to their aid. With close air support dropping ordnance almost on top of the American positions, the troopers managed to stem the tide of the Taliban assault. Many acts of heroism were performed that day, including those of Staff Sergeant Clinton Romisha, who was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his conduct. Because it has been used so rarely, it is safe to assume that Broken Arrow, in this context, is reserved for times of extreme crisis, where there's no other course of action that can be taken to save a unit from destruction. This isn't the only meaning that Broken Arrow can take, however. Since the 1940s, many nations have maintained a sizable arsenal of nuclear warheads. Given the destructive nature of these weapons, the utmost care is taken when transporting or maintaining them. Still, no matter how careful, accidents do happen. In this context, Broken Arrow is any number of unexpected events involving nuclear warheads, including but not limited to accidental detonation, 
loss, theft, or any other accident which does not result in nuclear war or any retaliatory response. Since 1950, there have been 32 broken arrows called in regards to nuclear weapons, as far as such information has been made public. The first of these incidents occurred on February 13, 1950. A B-36 Peacemaker bomber took off from Isleson Air Force Base in Alaska en route to Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. Shortly after taking off, the aircraft was plagued by mechanical issues. Three of the six engines had to be shut down. Due to icing, the plane was unable to maintain altitude and the crew jettisoned the bomb it was carrying over the Pacific Ocean. When it impacted the surface, the detonator triggered the warhead and exploded, destroying the weapon. Though the warhead was not armed, so the blast was a conventional one, not nuclear. The crew bailed out over British Columbia without any casualties, with the wreckage of the aircraft recovered after crashing in Vancouver. The most recent incident happened in 2000, when the Russian nuclear submarine the Kursk was conducting a training exercise in the Barents Sea, north of the Arctic Circle. During the exercise, it is believed that a torpedo leaked hydrogen peroxide, causing a reaction which ultimately led to the submarine sinking to the bottom of the sea. Although the Kursk did not have any nuclear warheads on board at the time of the accident, it was still considered a broken arrow situation as a precaution. None of the 118 crew on board survived the incident. It is important to note that a broken arrow situation does not necessarily mean there is an imminent or even possible risk of a nuclear detonation. Most scenarios involve mechanical issues during the transport of a nuclear warhead. In order for the nuke to detonate, it must be configured to do so, and properly armed, and for obvious safety reasons, this is not done unless the weapon is being deployed. The most pressing concerns during a broken arrow incident is the leaking of radiation into the surrounding area, which can require extensive and specialized cleanup methods and can be hazardous to the environment and to public health and security concerns, since a lost nuclear warhead is a massive security risk for obvious reasons. The mass majority of broken arrow situations have been resolved with little, if any, impact on public safety or national security. In spite of this, to date, there are six warheads, as far as the public is aware, that are currently unaccounted for. They are in locations that are difficult, if not impossible, to retrieve, such as the bottom of the ocean, though there were many attempts to retrieve them and certainly more than a few sleepless nights regarding their fate. There are other terms used to describe mishaps that involve nuclear weapons or radioactive materials. These have a significant overlap with Broken Arrow and include Empty Quiver, which is the loss, seizure, or theft of a nuclear warhead, Bent Spear, which is an incident involving a nuclear weapon or warhead, nuclear components, or a nuclear-equipped vehicle, and Faded Giant, which involves a nuclear reactor or radiological accident. Of these, Broken Arrow is the most significant and the cause for the most concern. Military jargon is filled with codes and euphemisms, some more serious than others. Of these, should Broken Arrow be called out in earnest, it is clear that something has gone catastrophically wrong. 